thing that we will talk about is can we deep discharge this battery? And so this is what happens when you deep discharge this battery. So deep discharge essentially run it for longer time. And so when you run it for a longer time, the following happens. So you, you can draw current uh, and and you can draw current <coughs> to a certain point and then suddenly the voltage tanks. This, this we term sudden death. So essentially after a certain uh, certain certain point, the battery just suddenly dies. So what we want to do is to try and understand what phenomenologically is the cause for the sudden death. So, well, we, this is not good. Uh, so we want to try and see how we can fix this problem. So first step is to try and understand what it is. So what causes sudden death? Right? So sudden death is a is a phenomenon that comes in, in in a rate problem because what we have here is we have we have a galvanostatic condition. So what that means is we want to draw a certain current. What that means is that there is a certain rate at which you need to transfer lithium ions to the reactive site, certain rate at which you transfer oxygen to the reactive site, and a certain rate at which you need to supply electrons to the reactive site. Right? Uh, and so what we want to do is to try and isolate what it is that, that causes this problem. And so uh, these are experiments that were done uh, once again at IBM uh, by Girish uh, and Brian. Uh, and so the experiment is the following. Uh, so this is an experiment that is done in a flat electrode uh, with uh, oxygen bubbled and, and uh, there's high concentration of lithium plus. So you can remove the lithium plus component and oxygen component. So what you're essentially probing is what you essentially want to probe is the rate at which electrons are supplied. And so the, how, how do you do this? You have something that is a probe molecule. So this is a ferrocene ferrocenium redox couple. And it's an outer sphere process, so it doesn't care what supplies the electron as long as it can supply the electron. And you can measure the current that is produced from the redox couple. So essentially, this is like this is like sticking something that has infinite rate and then trying to probe uh, probe the, the kinetics of that process. Um, and so this is the observation. So what happens here? This is the current that is measured in the redox couple. This is battery discharge. So you stop the battery at different points uh, and then measure the current that you that you that you get. And what you see here is that there's sort of this exponential fall in current. So this is a not scale, so it's sort of a, a, a strong decay of the current that you produce. And so this 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 discharge is actually done at uh, at uh, one uh, at, uh, at 10 microampere per centimeter squared. So that's somewhere here. And so what you see is essentially that's the same crossover point that you get there. So what this says is that uh, electron transport is a problem. Is it, is it surprising? It's probably not because lithium peroxide is a is a wide band gap, uh, wide band gap semiconductor, probably even an insulator. So what we wanted to do was to try and probe the charge transport mechanism of this. So there, there of course, many many charge transport mechanisms that are possible. What we wanted to probe was was to try and understand what are the what is the coherent charge transport in this process. And and the this and it is worth pointing out that if tunneling, which is uh, coherent charge transport is possible, then it will dominate and, 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 and that this will at least, uh, if, if this mode is active, then this mode will essentially be the dominant mode. And so what we want to do is try and understand how we can model this process. It's a very complicated system. You have, you have essentially uh, capsule particles, so glassy carbon, then you have lithium peroxide growing, and then you have lithium plus oxygen uh, coming in and then reacting. And so what we want to do is to is to is to study the rate at which we supply electrons from here to here. Okay, so this is a very 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 complicated problem. But uh, what what we, we need to try and make some simplifications. One can easily substitute the glassy carbon because all that does is it's essentially a conductor. So you can substitute that with any conductor that has a similar work function. So we use gold to substitute the glassy carbon. Now this is the hard part because we have to try and understand. Um, understand how it is that the electron goes into this state, which is set by something extremely complicated. Now here, the trick that we use is that there is a well-defined chemical potential at which this reaction scheme proceeds. What that means is there's a, there's a, there's a well-defined potential relative to vacuum where this, where this reaction proceeds, and that is essentially the, the chemical potential where window where we need to probe. And, and luckily, in the discharge conditions of this, we can substitute this by, by gold. And so we essentially probe the, the coherent charge transport in a, in a metal insulator and metal configuration. So the metal, the two metal leads that we probe, uh, use to probe this is, is essentially gold on both sides. And what we want to study is the, is the transport property. So essentially how much current you can su uh, support as a function of bias uh, across these two leads and, and putting, putting lithium peroxide in. And so 
Um, so we, we've calculated this for, for a whole host of structures. I'll show one. Um, this is a, a stoichiometric lithium peroxide. And what is shown here is current as a function of bias. And so let's take a slice at a constant bias. Right, so this is three layers, so it's basically off order one nanometer. And then you have three layers which can supply a large current, five layers which sort of massive, massively decays in the amount of current that it can support, and then seven layers and nine layers sort of die off. Right? And this is not surprising, classic oxygen stuff. Uh, there's an exponential decay in the in the current that you can support as a function of distance. So you can replot this, um, and so you can plot the log of the current as a function of d, and then you see this exponential fall off. Now, if one asks the question, uh, if one asks the question of uh, of when is when is the transition point where the, the the tunneling is not sufficient to support this current, you essentially get this estimate of about six nanometers. This is, uh, we essentially reproduce the features of the sudden death. The sudden death essentially comes from the fact that at this point you no longer can support the, the current, so you need an exponential rise in bias to, to keep the electrochemistry going. So this essentially shows that the sudden death uh, is is largely caused by electron transfer. We sort of we sort of put this picture together late 2011, and and then there was sort of a wrinkle in the story. Um, so these were experiments that came out of uh, out of MIT, uh, and and um, they sort of showed that that there are much much larger length scales that you observe. You, you see length scales. This is 500 nanometer length scale. So this is of order of order 300, 400 nanometers. So this clearly is there's a, there's a problem here because because we definitely cannot count uh, 400, 500 nanometers. So what is going on? Uh, so what we wanted to do was to try and see if there's any other mode active. It actually turns out that we only probe the bulk part. The surfaces of lithium peroxide are also conducting. So, so that means is that one has to one has to consider the surface conductivity also uh, when when one when one wants to find out what exactly is the Transport limit of of lithium peroxide, and so this is one of the one of the, the cases where we had a we had a theory guided uh, theory guided experiment. Uh, the theoretical predictions uh, came first, where essentially what you have is you have two regimes. So it, it essentially comes out that there's a, there's a certain characteristic rate associated with the, with surface conductivity, and and the in, interesting interesting point about surface conductivity is that it scales linearly with distance. Because the longer it has to travel, the more difficult it is. So it's a, it's a, it's a standard uh, standard diffusive process. And so what you have is you have if you plot capacity, which is essentially a metric for volume, right? Um, as a function of current, there will come a point where it's no longer tunneling dominated, but it's dominated by surface conductivity. So you essentially will have this very neat functional form difference between capacity as a function of the rate. And so you'll have one regime where you have surface conductivity dominated. And another regime where you have fault conductivity dominated, and, and uh, in fact, uh, experiments came out exactly the same way. Uh, uh, you can see that that uh, that initially you have this one over L sort of a dependence, um, and then you sort of have this tapering uh, logarithmic dependence. So this is sort of this this uh, very clearly shows that that you know that surface conductivity is dominant. What is actually really interesting to notice, I told you that for a real battery, we want to set it about 10 or 20 microampere per centimeter squared. So it seems that the surface conductivity is not sufficient at the rate we want. And this is actually quite important because uh, all these grand claims of, of, uh, of these particles being relevant for a real battery, they may not be relevant for, a, for an actual battery. So, and another thing that naturally comes out is the, is the morphology actually is it beautifully comes out that this these are sort of the shapes that come out as a because you want to you want to travel and so you simply impose the condition that you, you discretize your domain and you ask the and if you ask the question uh, is 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 this volume element capable of supporting that current and then if you, if you if you just impose that simple condition you essentially get this this donut type morphology automatically so this sort of uh, this sort of is a, is is one of the one of the successes of, of, of theory using experiments.